Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. Amazon VPC is a service that lets you launch AWS resources in a logically isolated virtual network that you define. You have complete control over your virtual networking environment, including the selection of your own IP address range, the creation of subnets, and the configuration of route tables and network gateways. A virtual private cloud, a VPC, is a virtual network dedicated to your AWS account. It is logically isolated from other virtual networks in the AWS cloud. You can launch your AWS resources, such as Amazon EC2 instances, into your VPC. A default VPC is created automatically by Amazon inside each region for your account. This way, you don't have to worry about it when starting with AWS services. A VPC spans all the availability zones in the region. The following diagram shows a new VPC. After you create a VPC, you can add one or more subnets in each availability zone. Benefits of using Amazon Virtual Private Cloud Amazon VPC When you are creating a VPC, you are actually setting up a data center in the cloud, utilizing amazing AWS infrastructure. It's secure, highly available, and scalable. Secure and monitored network connections, simple setup and use, and customizable virtual network. VPC Highlights A VPC is a logically isolated piece of AWS cloud dedicated to your company. This means you can run applications on overly provisioned, highly available, and redundant infrastructure setup, and it's managed by AWS. All the complexity of setting up a data center with cables, server racks, hardware, power supplies, and etc. are all managed by AWS. A VPC belongs to a region. A VPC spans all availability zones. You can have multiple VPCs per region. A VPC contains one or more subnets. A subnet is tied to a single availability zone. EC2 instances launch into subnets. When you create a VPC, you must specify a range of IPv4 addresses for the VPC in the form of a classless interdomain routing CIDR block. For example, 10.0.0.0/16. This is the primary CIDR block for your VPC. IP addresses. A big part of your VPC is your IP address. Classless interdomain routing blocks are used for these IP addresses. These IP addresses are private and are not publicly routable. Initially, you set a CIDR block for VPC. Then you assign portions of this CIDR block to individual subnets inside the VPC. CIDR blocks, sizes between 16 and 28 are allowed. Subnet Basics a subnet is a range of IP addresses in your VPC. You can launch AWS resources such as EC2 instances into a specific subnet. When you create a subnet, you specify the IPv4 CIDR block for the subnet, which is a subset of the VPC CIDR block. Each subnet must reside entirely within one availability zone and cannot span zones. By launching instances into separate availability zones, you can protect your applications from the failure of a single zone. Subnet Types Depending on how you configure your VPC, subnets are considered public, private, or VPN only. Public Subnet The subnet traffic is routed to the public internet through an internet gateway or egress-only internet gateway. Private Subnet the subnet traffic can't reach the public internet through an internet gateway or egress-only internet gateway. Access to the public internet requires an NAT device. VPN-only subnet. The subnet traffic is routed to a site-to-site -site VPN connection through a virtual private gateway. The subnet traffic can't reach the public internet through an internet gateway. Connecting your VPC to other networks. You can connect your virtual private cloud VPC to other networks, for example, other VPCs, the internet, or your on-premises network. The following diagram demonstrates some of these connectivity options. VPC A is connected to the internet through an internet gateway. The EC2 instance in the private subnet of a VPC A can connect to the internet using the NAT gateway in the public subnet of VPC A. VPC B is connected to the internet through an internet gateway. The EC2 instance in the public subnet of VPC B can connect to the internet using the internet gateway. VPC A and VPC B are connected to each other through a VPC peering connection and a transit gateway. 
The Transit Gateway has a VPN attachment to a data center. VPCB has an AWS Direct Connect connection to a data center. Route Table Every resource created in a subnet gets a private IP address from the CIDR of the subnet, and instances communicate with each other using this IP. How to reach a particular IP is defined in the subnet's associated route table. The table has the following structure, a destination and the target for the destination. If our route table has multiple routes, the most specific route that matches the traffic, longest prefix match, will be applied. Let us say we want to reach 10.1.1.24, and in the route table, we have two routes, one for 10.1.1.0/24, and the other, 10.1.0.0/16. Then it will use the first one. Elastic Network Interface. An elastic network interface is a logical networking component in a VPC that represents a virtual network card. Security groups are tied to these interfaces. We can attach multiple interfaces to an instance. Also, each ENI can have multiple private IPs. In EKS, we use multiple ENIs and multiple IPs to launch multiple pods on the same EC2 with different IPs. Another use case is a dual-homed EC2. Elastic IP Address An elastic IP address is a static public IP address that we can attach to our AWS account. These IPs are fixed, unlike public IPs which change on instance termination. We can allocate an IP from AWS Managed IP or bring our own IP to AWS. Security Group A security group acts as a firewall to control inbound and outbound traffic on the ENI. Security groups are stateful. This means when it initiates a request, the response traffic for that request is allowed to flow in regardless of inbound security group rules and vice versa. By default, it allows all outbound traffic and denies all inbound traffic. Network Access Control List NACLs act as a firewall at the subnet level. A custom NACL by default denies all inbound and outbound traffic. Network ACLs are stateless, which means that responses to allowed inbound traffic are subject to the rules for outbound traffic and vice versa. Each subnet can only be attached to one NACL. NAT Gateway We saw that resources in the private subnet can't be reached from the internet and they also can't reach the internet. But we need to access the internet for various use cases like downloading software. To enable the host from the private subnet to reach the internet, we use NAT. NAT device enables instances in a private subnet to connect to the internet but prevents host on the internet from initiating connections with the instances. NAT does the address translation from private IP to its own public IP. Must be created in a public subnet for accessing internet addresses.